stuff. Hello friends, today we are going to deal with a very interesting poem, No Men Are Foreign from James Kirkup from the class 9 textbook of CBSE. Here the poet is talking about a very interesting fact of universal harmony and peaceful coexistence. The entire poetry is based on the background that we all are human beings. You might be living in different geographical locations of this world. You might be American, Canadian, Australian. But at the end of the day, we are all living beings. We all belong to the race of humanity. We begin the first stanza and try to extract the ideas and emotions which are embedded in this poetry. Remember, no men are strange, no country is foreign. So in the opening line itself, the poet is stressing on the fact that we are not alien to each other. We might be belonging to different castes, different strata, different countries, might be practicing different religion, but we are not strange because we are all human beings. Beneath all uniforms, a single body breathes. Our uniforms might be different. We might be serving in the armies and the different forces of different countries, but we all are one because we all belong to the human race, the race of humanity. Here the word uniform is also symbolic of the physical body of the various human beings. You might be Australian, you might be Canadian, you might be an American, you might be white, black, the color of our skin might be different, but a single body breathes. That means the poet is trying to lay importance on the fact that we all are one, we all are living beings, we all belong to the same big family of humanity. Like ours, the land our brothers walk upon is earth like this. We use the same mother earth, we are nurtured by the same mother earth. We all walk on the same earth and that's why we belong to the same race of humanity. A very symbolic line has been stressed upon by the poet, that's the last line of the first stanza, is earth like this in which we all shall lie. The poet is telling a universal fact of death when each and every living being rests finally. He's telling we might be walking in different areas, we might be different individuals, belong to different countries and nationality, but when our physical mortal being will come to an end, we will all be laid in the deep arenas of this Mother Earth. We all finally will be resting in Mother Earth. Mother Earth will be providing us the shelter required after the long journey of life. Now we move upon to the second stanza. They too aware of sun and air and water are fed by peaceful harvest, by war's long winter star. Here again the poet is stressing on the fact that each and every living being, each and every individual belong to the human race, derives its nourishment, the energy required to sustain life from sun, air, water. The elements of the earth remain the same which nurtures us all. Are fed by peaceful harvest by war's long winter starved. We all enjoy the harvest which is done during the times of peace and serenity. And each and every individual, each and every individual belong to a human race, starves or longs for food in the winter of war. Their hands are ours and in their lines we need a labor not different from our own. We might be practicing different professions in different areas. Some might be doctors, some engineers, some architects, belong to different countries, but we all are one. A labor not different from our own, we all belong to the same race of humanity. With this universal message of peaceful coexistence and universal harmony, I'd like to conclude this particular session. I hope you might have extracted some ideas which are important to sustain life on earth. Thank you.